Muhammad <laughs> All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His assistance, His guidance, and His forgiveness. We take refuge with Him from the evil within our souls, from the consequence of their misdeeds. Whoever Allah gives guidance to, and can sleep, and whoever He misleads, and can guide. I bear witness that there's nothing in our worthy worship besides Allah alone, has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is a servant and messenger. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him peace and we send to him our salutations on this blessed day. He says we ask him to give peace to his family members, his companions, and everyone who follows the good will, goodness and goodwill uh, into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah he says, سيقول سفهاء من الناس ما بلناهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها The foolish among the people will say what is it that turned them away from the Qibla the direction of prayer that they used to pray to قُلْ لِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقَ وَالْمَغْرِبِ يَهْدِ مَنْ يَشَاء إِلَى سِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ Say to Allah belongs the East and the West, the guys who not pleases to a straight path. In other words, the the Mushrikeen were surprised in Mecca. Why when the Prophet he directed the Sahaba to face Beit al Jerusalem. And they thought that this was a sign of his guidance among the Muslim among the Muslims. And Allah's response to them is that say to them. Allah, He is the owner of the East and the West, and He guides and He leads us to the path which is most which is most straight. Then He goes on and says, And thus we have made you into a justly balanced nation, in order that you be witnesses over humanity, and the messenger be a witness. Over you. And we only altered the Qibla in order to know or to bring, make manifest those who truly follow the Messenger and distinguish them from those who will turn back on their heels. In other, in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He changed the Qibla from the early Muslim from the Kaaba to Bayt al Maqdis in order to test, to see how committed they were to following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know the history that once the Prophet reached Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He turned them back to the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had tested the early community in many ways, as we know, the persecution. The torture, the harassment, through doubt, even. We know the Isra'a min Araj and the Prophet sometimes. I traveled last night to Beit al Maqdis and returned last night from Beit al Maqdis. And this was a fitna for many of the people following him at this time. This was about 10 years into the mission of the Prophet. All this struggle and this pain and toil, and many of them left at that moment. And we all are tested, our commitments are tested in many different ways, brothers and sisters, as they are today, even. And we, of course, did not experience anything to the degree and the scope of what was experienced by the Sahaba. 
we in America don't even experience what Muslims in different parts of the world experience in terms of tribulation, in terms of struggle, in terms of toil, the most that we can ever complain about. Perhaps are things like somebody looked at me in a threatening way or he called me a terrorist or the media used to demonize the Muslims. And when we reflect upon everything happening in the multiple thought lines that are dividing the world, not only the Muslims, then as I stated earlier today, at least for those who are around, an important question to ask is, what role is a Muslim supposed to play in trying to balance the extremes, so bring balance to the extremes that we see in the world. Their political fault line, the gender fault line, the racial fault lines, their, their even sexual orientation fault, fault lines, the biology fault line, or planes of biological realities which we know not to be true. What, what, what role is a Muslim supposed to play? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we are ummah wasaf, that we are a justly balanced nation. We are a fair nation. We are a just nation. We are a moderate nation. We're not a nation of extremes. And unfortunately, Muslims find themselves today embroiled in all of the different uh, sources of polarization and we continue to add to the polarization rather than being what our names or our titles actually suggest, which is that we are peacemakers, that we're supposed to be peacemakers, that Muslims are supposed to stand out. Being a Muslim is a burden and a blessing. It's a blessing as we know. To be a Muslim is a blessing but it's also a burden. That it, it's not easy. Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just doesn't hand it to you, grant you the greatest of all rewards simply because you say you're Muslim or because you have your family has been Muslim for a thousand years. That all of us in our commitments are tested at times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing to test us, especially during these times, especially in these areas related to politics and race. That we're not a people who just simply we lash, lash out at others, or we sort of return the negative favor to them. So if, if Republicans or conservatives were demonizing Muslims for years, and then now they're being demonized, our response is not supposed to be sweet revenge. Now you get the taste. You get a taste of what we felt. You're sure that's natural to, 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 to want to act on that impulse. But it's not supposed to be the way that we respond. That we're not supposed to join in in the demonization and say, hey, what they did to us, now we're going to do it to them. No. We don't join in. We're not supposed to. That was not the way of our messenger, that he never responded because of a personal attack. He was not a vindictive person, as we know. Attacked personally or his character, he did not respond and he was not vindictive. That he acknowledged that his people have, they just understand. That God, my people, they don't know, they don't get it. Forgive them, they don't understand. They don't know what's happening. They don't understand who I am. They don't understand that we only mean good for them. That was the prophet's response. But we're not just going to be people, we just take side. hey, well, I like this, this this political faction, I'm going with them against the other. I like this particular race, I'm going to go against, against them against the other race. And they get involved in all of this polarization, the anti-whiteness, even. To see Muslims, it's really ridiculous to see it embarrassing at times, see Muslims embrace this culture war, this racial um, polarization. Embrace it. Everybody's now woke, as we say. Talking about white privilege. And talking about white supremacy. There are different types of supremacy. There are different types of domination. All right? But we ourselves are not supposed to stoop to the level of others. 
Rasulullah sallallahu would not have done so, as we know. He came for the salvation of all humanity. All of Banu Adam are redeemable. Every single one of Banu Adam is redeemable. What you are, your color, your culture, whatever, you, you're, all of that is an accident of nature. Your gender is an accident of nature. That it had nothing to do with you. You didn't choose what family or parent you would have. But we have to be people who are willing to be courageous at times, or of course the appropriate times, right? So that we can lead others and show them a better way. A Muslim is a peacemaker. Abu Dhar al Ghifari, radiallahu an, in a beautiful hadith related in the Targhib al Tarheeb. He says, Amarani Khalidi Bisabah, that my friend, he ordered me to do seven things. Or, or you would say, my best friend told me to do seven things. And of course, his best friend was the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Abu Dhar al Rifari from the, from the Sabi Qun and Ovalun. They're the very early Muslims, the very early Muslims, from the very or first 10 of the Muslims. They say, he ordered me to do seven things. He ordered me to love the poor and to be close to them. The first thing he ordered them to do. He say, he ordered me to love the people of my tribe, the people of my race, the people of my class, and to be close to them, but to love the poor people and become close to them. To know what their needs are, fulfill their needs, show goodwill that you've been ordered to do so. Two, he ordered me to look at those who are below me and not to look at those who are above me in status. And this is one of the fundamental problems in the world today. There's a culture of ingratitude, of kufr, of kufran, and na'ma, a, a culture of ingratitude. White people got too much power, we need some of the power too. Men got too much power, we need some of the power too. Cisgender people got too much power, we need some of that power too. Straight people got too much power, we need some of that power too. But that's not what the Messenger Ali Islam called us to. That's not our issue. That's not what we are here for. And he said, the dunya is mal'una. This world is cursed. Mal'unun la fiha. And everything in it is cursed, which means that anything in this world, everything in this world, that it, it, it takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa dhikr Allah wa aliman wa muta'allima. Except for the remembrance of God, a learned person in one learning. The only things that are not cursed in this world. The only things that don't take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah, a learned person, means one teaching about Allah and His Messenger, and one learning about Allah and His Messenger. Everything else is taking you away. But we have become materialists. We want the dunya. When akhiratu khairun laka, uh, the hereafter it is it's better and more lasting so he ordered me to look at those who are below me of course so I could be know what I have and appreciate what I have rather than constantly be focusing on those who are above me who are better off than I am it's a culture of ingratitude people have anything they have a lot they have a much Homes, they have cars, they have televisions, computers, cell phones. And they see someone else, this person's a millionaire. I don't think he should be a millionaire. And the millionaire sees a billionaire, so I don't think he, he deserves to be a billionaire. But we ignore what we have and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Luxury. Then he says, وَأَمَرْنِي أَنْ أَصِلَ الرَّحِمَ وَإِنْ Three, he ordered me to maintain ties to my family even if they turn away from me. 
to keep family ties even if they turn away from you. That you try to maintain a connection to your brothers, your sisters, your mother, your father. Even if there's a grudge, even if you're falling out, as we say, find some way to maintain that connection. The Prophet emphasizes this connection. In spite of, of course, the Prophet condemning uh, tribalism and racism, but he also encouraged us maintaining ties to those who are closer to one another in blood. It has to be a balance. That is not a situation where we say, I'm with my tribe regardless of if they're right or wrong. No, I'm with my right, my, my tribe when they're right, and I'm against them when they're wrong. Right, but I maintain my family ties, even if your parents are calling you to shirk, as the Quran says. Don't obey them. But he said, accompany them in this world with courtesy. Show them courtesy in spite of just in that point, don't obey them. Then he says, And he ordered me that I not beg or ask anything from anyone. In other words, not to beg from people. Begging is not haram, but it's also not honorable, an honorable thing. But for those who need it, they, they ask. But he said, don't maintain your dignity. Don't ask anyone for anything. And he ordered me to speak the truth even if it's bitter. Even if it happens to be bitter. And he ordered me do not, not to fear in the way of God the blame of the blamer. Meaning as long as I'm speaking truth, long as I'm calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling to what is right, that I don't care who cuts me off. I don't care who bans me. I don't care who, who cancels me. That if you're upon haq, Allah is with you. And if Allah is with you, who cares who's against you? And then lastly he said, And he said that I should make frequent mention of There's no might nor power except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Why? Because they are from a treasure found under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Reinforcing our servitude, our, our need, and our weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are words of advice given to Abu Dhar al Ghifari. These are things that Muslims need to return to, teachings we need to return to. Love the poor, be close to the poor, maintain our family ties. Look at those who are worse off than us, not at those above us. Don't beg. Speak the truth even if it's bitter. Do not fear the blame of those who blame when you're speaking. The truth. When you are speaking the truth, and remind yourselves of the quwa, the hole in the quwa of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. أقول قولي هذا وصفر الله دي بركم ورسالة المسلمين والمسلمات. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا مسلم بينا محمد وعلى آله أجمعين. For closing, once again, brothers and sisters, it is a a time where the world needs Muslims more than any other time. It's a time of great confusion, a time of great polarization, as a time for Muslims to stand up, make themselves known to rise above the, 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 the fray, to be individuals who are known for their balance and for their reason, not people who just simply align with others based upon tribal affiliation. It's not one of those times. The world is going to hell. The world is going to hell. Will we do anything to try to save it? 
Of course, we, we know this is all going to end one day, but we don't want to be contributors to that. We have to be people who truly live up to the meaning of Islam. Of course, we know it means submission, but it also means to make peace. You're a peacemaker. That's it. That is what a Muslim is. And I'll end with quoting by quoting the Prophet ﷺ where he says in the famous hadith, you will not enter heaven until you have faith. And you will not have faith until you love one another. Shall I not direct you to a thing? If you happen to do it, if you were to do it, you would love one another. Spread peace among yourselves. Spread peace among yourselves. That is the message of our messenger, alayhi salatu salam. Allah <laughs> ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ربنا آتنا الله ربنا آت أنفسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اقسمنا من خشتك ما ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون به علينا مصيبات الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحيجنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ذئرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم لا تدعنا ذنبا إلا كفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار وقنا أذاب النار وقنا أذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلاما على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين